Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I am going to do a safari race card today and see how many animals I can fit into a land cruiser, or shall we say three land cruisers. <laughs> Curtis Steiner sent me these two stamp sets because I wanted to see how many of them I could fit in that land cruiser. And I thought I'd take some stills and show you how I built up the image. I stamped first the little car and masked out the bottom so I could add the dirt along the way and then just kept masking out animals and adding more behind them. So you build a scene up from the front to the back and I just kept adding and adding and adding. It looks like a jumble right now, but that's one of the things I wanted on this card. I wanted to see how much I could jumble and make it a crazy race for whatever it is they're racing for. I don't know what they'd win if they were animals winning a race in the safari. This car, I decided to change the color on after I colored the yellow and I wasn't gonna restamp all this. So there you have it. <laughs> I just decided to color right over top of it because I could. And then started adding my shadows to it. Now, like I said, for the bottom of the cars, I wanted this to have a lot of dirt in it so that they're kicking up dirt as they're driving. I did stamp the car, as you notice, on the Kitty Wumpus and that is gonna make them look like they're all moving and running around as well. And I wiped off a little bit of the ink off the bottom of the tires. And that's one way that you can mask without having to use sticky notes and all that kind of stuff, just mask by taking ink off of something. And that's gonna give me the ability to add dirt on there and have these cars look like they're setting into the dirt. You could alternatively use a white pen to add dirt coming up over top of the cars, but it looks a little more natural if you do it this way. So I'm adding a bunch of shadows and things to my car and building up the colors on it to give it some dimension. And I'm mostly gonna color from the front to the back as well as I did my stamping from the front to the back. So I want my front image, of course, to be the best colored because that's the one people are gonna look at first and, and catch their eye. So I wanted this car, when I spent the most time on it, so it would be the one that would just carry the rest of the card really well. And then started working on coloring all my animals. And it was really fun that a lot of these animals were in the same kind of size set, I guess, in the two stamp sets. I don't know if they meant them to go together this way, but you know, it is what it is because that's how I used them. And I was glad that they did work well together because if you had, you know, an, an alligator that was a completely different size or something. So if you're using other stamp sets, be aware of what size relationship each of the animals has to each other if you're gonna do something like this. Because if you're gonna to try to make it look like they're really in the cars, they're really having a race, they should look like they're at least in proportion to each other. So I'm gonna add my details onto my lion and once again, if, you, um, if you're coloring this kind of a thing, you want more of your detailed coloring to be in the front. So I did choose having the lion way up front because he's got the most interesting mane and stuff. So I can put lots of details around him. And he's also gonna be yellow, which is gonna pop him to the front since he's a nice bright color. And I'm gonna be careful not to use much more green in there so that the alligator also pops more to the front and starts pulling to the front of the image deepen up some of those shadows inside the car and then move on to my crazy giraffes. I did stamp two of the giraffes just because I had a little gap there on the left hand side of that one giraffe. So I thought, oh, well, let me just add another head in there. So masked him out and threw another giraffe inside and then added my shadows onto these little guys and using a couple different oranges and browns to, to make them and uh, color their little ossicones, which I learned from a previous video that I did on giraffes. <laughs> I should probably do a roundup of my giraffe images at some point too, because I think I've colored quite a few giraffes here on YouTube. So now I'm gonna color the second car and I'm gonna use lighter colors for that one. So I'm gonna let this one be yellow and it's going to recede a little further into the background, that sort of thing, since it's further back but I wanted it to have still a bright color so it doesn't go too far into the back. And then I'm careful about how much I put down at the bottom there because I want to have that dirt kind of come up again 
I need some dirt to come in between the two cars, so it looks a little natural there, so that's why that car is stopping on the left-hand side before it gets to the front car. And then add the rest of the details onto that. I'm gonna jump over and do the elephant. To stamp him, he was a bit of a challenge. I had to think ahead and know that his his little um, his nose was going to hang out in front of that top edge of the car. I didn't think enough to make sure that it hung out in front of the steering wheel. So he's his is kind of tucking back in to drive the steering wheel, but he decided, I guess, to wrap it around the edge of the Jeep. But I had to mask off the corner of the Jeep and then stamp my elephant so that he kind of looks like he's sticking out over top of it. I just didn't want that Jeep in front of his nose. I thought that would be funny. So this was, I think I probably spent more time doing the masking for this than I did the coloring. But I think it was worth it in the long run because it was still just hilarious and so much fun to do. Now I did have extra animals here and you know I started off when I was doing my masking and stuff I was doing the two cars and I realized I needed another car because there was no way that that little rhino and the bird and everything were really going to fit into this one car so I was going to need another and that's why I stamped a little piece of a car on that left hand corner. And it sounds like I have my own safari race going on outside the window with the two dogs playing. Apologies for them and their craziness. So I'm going to add a blue car back here, which will pull a little of that blue color in from the bird, but it's also going to be a darker color, so it's going to recede to the back a little bit. And then we get the little red bird at the top. I'm going to add some wheels onto the last of my cars. And this little guy, I thought he was going to stand in front. He could have been in the car, but I thought he could just be observing the race because he's the little person standing on the sidelines. So again, with him, I wiped off part of the stamp when I stamped him so that he was going to have some dust in front of him. And I'm stopping the coloring before it gets to everything so it looks like he's a little bit out there. So now I have that little camera fail accident. That's a really nice thing to have, isn't it? When the camera just turns off and you didn't know it. But I, there's going to be enough of the coloring of the dust that I decided I'm not going to start this whole thing over again. But I'm just using a bunch of browns and creating different shapes for the dust and getting darker and darker until it just looks right to my eye. There's not really a science to this. Just kind of doing mushy colors. If you've taken my, um, my class on my art classes channel where I talk about doing the uh, Copic watercolor, that's a little of the technique that I'm using at the bottom there to create that dirt. Just a whole lot of ink, a whole lot of colors and allowing a lot of that to just blend itself in a weird way. So we also had the camera doing a zoomy thing just because it really wanted to be irritating after this. <laughs> Such fun. So I'm gonna add more and more colors on this. Let the cloud of dust go off behind them as well. And then create some real dark background or ground ground on that right hand corner because that contrast is gonna give me a lot more punch and then just go in with tinier and tinier dots and lines and things to give it more detailed dirt texture with different colors of browns. And then even taking a little bit of white, and this is where I said you could do this going over the cars with white instead of masking that out, but it's a whole lot easier not to have to do that except for where you want it to be. And here I'm just letting some of those areas that I want to spill out and be on that, that light, bright, crazy, um, crazy dirt side I can just make some of those areas go over top of the image but I don't have to do it everywhere because I've done some of that masking already with my with wiping off when I was doing my stamping so as much time and everything as this took it was probably one of the most fun cards that I've done in a long time <laughs> And thank you to Macy and Gerda for sending me these stamp sets so I could play with them. Oh my gosh, what a riot of a card. I just popped it onto a card base and called it done because I didn't even want to put a stamp sentiment over top of this at all. I'm going to put my sentiment on the inside because it was way too fun. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, click that like button down below. You can subscribe by clicking on my face, watch some more videos, go check out some classes. 
and leave a comment in the doobly doo. I like to read your comments. I do click the like button on them so you know that I've read them. I just don't have time to comment on everybody's in reply, but I love to hear what you have to say. See you guys later.